Just cast. Network. My picture start kicking ass, just like it said at the beginning of the program. Man of the hour, tower of power. Too sweet to sour. Sending your ass on the jabroni jet to the other side of the territory, brother. The Alabama Hammer. Nightmares on the best part of my day. The goods from the woods. Hot damn. Welcome to the Goods from the Woods. I'm Rivers Langley. Pat Riley. This is a good night. Man of the hour. Tower of power. Too sweet of a sow. If you don't like this mess, then you get the wrong address. But today you might actually have the right address. That's Mr. right. Mr. Goodnight on the satellite system. On the laser beam system. On the microwave system. <laughs> on the podcast system. On the system. podcast system. It's made out of cobalt and asphalt. My fault. Your fault. San Andreas' fault. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you know, since since starting this show in September, we have we have received mountains yeah. of, uh, of fan letters as well as we've uh, also received fan letters for Mountain actually for Mount for <laughs> Leslie West. Yeah, know. they think we're actually the band yeah. sometimes. Um, we are not Leslie West. I am not no. Felix Petipaldi. Yeah, uh, although I we we do love Mountain. Yeah, uh, but uh, their lead even. yeah their lead singer was Andre the Giant. Yeah, climbing great record. <laughs> So, That's Leslie it. West, if you're listening, we got a bag of actual letters yeah. you know, for you. And Leslie West, letters. if you're listening, we have a bag of pork rinds <laughs> for yeah. you. And ladies, if you're listening out there, like, seriously, if you listen to the show and you're like, I really want to get with this Mr. Goodnight or any other, other, like, members of the show, although Pat, you know, is, is Saw Girls, he's taken, you can <laughs> feel free to write in any time or, like, call me. Or because I live on Sepulveda, or email <laughs> the show saying how much you want to get with Mr. Goodnight because we can make this thing happen. Yeah, I got to. <laughs> I'm just making sure if is Leslie West still alive? Yeah, yeah. Leslie West alive, and, okay. and he lost a lot of weight. He lost a lot of weight. Well, he had to. Have. He's only a hill now. No, well, unfortunately, <laughs> he lost. A, unfortunately, he lost a, a foot to diabetes, but he's still. Did uh, he? Yeah, he's still performing. He's still. Uh, he's it's still not touring. Kamala. This is no. Leslie West. Leslie West, yeah. He's still performing. You know, he's yeah. uh, still doing it. So, uh, but good, because Leslie West kicks ass. Hell yeah. With one foot. <laughs> That's right. That's a talent. He dude. has yeah. to use his right to foot, kick but he ass kicks ass. Foot. Yeah. Fuck yeah. If anybody could, it'd be Leslie, yeah, well, Leslie West. You know, uh, Paramount Eric. But yeah, in our in our pile of letters, we also have uh, you know people people ask us questions. Specifically, we got literal a lot of questions. Letters, not just emails. We get literal handwritten handwritten letters. The people at, at this place hate us. Every time we come into Disgrace Land, it's just mail on top of mail on That's top right. of mail. Looks like Santa Claus. Usually, it's Bed Bath and Beyond coupons and and. Junk I get mail. a lot of fucking junk mail. I get, I get more mail for this show than I do for my house because I just get junk mail for the previous occupant. Yeah, you know, I should take some of them AARP coupons that <laughs> Brian <laughs> boy always gets because I get more of his mail than I do my and own. Don't you get a lot of uh, auto parts? Uh, I do get a lot of auto parts for stuff. David Taylor. For David Taylor, and I send it to my neighbor Kenny Glue. Yeah, because <laughs> he loves that shit. Kenny Glue. <laughs> Kenny Glue. Yeah, he was my neighbor when I lived in um, Weymouth, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. We used to do things like go fishing in the middle of the night. Or, you know, go to a Dunkin' Donuts in the middle of the night and talk about auto parts because that's how much <laughs> or fishing. stuff there is to do <laughs> in Massachusetts. Yeah. Or fishing. We would fish in the middle of the night. Yeah. Or you'd go to a Dunkin' Donuts and talk about fishing. Yeah. Or we'd go to the Walmart in Plymouth that was yeah. 24 hours and look at the auto parts. Yeah. You know, it's middle of the winter. you got to buy that antifreeze That's up there. right. It's a good hobby. You that's know. how I got this wallet that's falling apart. Yeah. If, if you're Walmart listening trips. and you <laughs> – oh, nice. billfold, if you will. If, if you're listening and you're in college – and you have to write any sort of sociology paper, I recommend a Walmart visit at, like, midnight. Oh, can... I hate grading those papers. Oh, because you can, you can learn so much. I hate grading those papers. <laughs> I really do. Yeah? I really do. Is, is the Walmart uh, too... Well, there's no Walmarts around, but people go through Ralph's, and, and yeah. you know, they're just like, I went to a, uh, you know, cafe and just watched people. And it's like, what the hell are you going to learn? I don't know. I'll tell you this, and we would go to that Walmart in the middle of the night. We were the only ones in it. Yeah. And we would start doing things like playing hide-and-seek in there. That's just so much fun. needed something to do. Dude, playing hide-and-seek in a Walmart is so much fun. Yeah, it when is. you're, you know, 28 or whatever I was at the time. <laughs> I thought you were 28 now. Yeah, I've been 28 for a while. It's a time warp, you understand? 
stand. I'm <laughs> caught in sort of a time warp. I'm like Rocky. I don't age properly. Yeah. Because you watch the Rocky movies, they are off chronologically speaking. They're at it's least, true. yeah, seriously, because he's in Russia. He's in Russia, and his kid is a little kid, and then he comes back from Russia, and his kid is 14. Yeah. At the beginning of the fifth movie. I know. I know, and Glasnost and Perestroika didn't, didn't happen. Didn't happen. Yeah. It's like an alternate reality. Well, you know what? Rocky ended the Cold War anyway, so yeah, that yeah. probably explains it. I thought Nikita Koloff uh, teaming with Dusty Rhodes ended. It should have. You know, brought, as they're saying, these two superpowers together, who didn't always agree on everything, but at least had a common bond of what you wanted out of life. So we got, we, we've gone through all the letters. We had our intern, uh, Dino Machino, go through the letters. Yes. Uh, we had Neighbor Frank go through the letters. We... Uh, fed him in leftover pizza um, yeah. and let him sleep and on the flat couch. Flat Coke, he loves that. Yeah, so we got five letters that I think people are asking for your advice. They're lost in life and they are listening well, to the podcast. I understand it because life is hard to get through. It goes on for a really long time and it's difficult in a lot of places. So, you know, I'm, I'm there to help people. You know, I don't want to call myself Christ-like, but yeah. I just did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because... If you have questions for Good Night, feel free to yeah, tweet at free. us. Uh, I'm, I'm here to say the world. At really. The Goods Pod on Twitter, and you can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash The Goods Pod. Yeah. Um, and if you want to, you know, like meet up with me, that's, yeah. get in touch with me that way, way too. I live on Sepulveda. <laughs> we have a good time. Seriously, because tonight I was probably just going to get high and watch Lost in Space. You can do it with me. And who knows if the night will take us, honey? So I'm going to read the first letter for you, Mr. Good Night. Um, dear Mr. Good Night. I'm looking into pursuing knife collecting as a hobby. I was considering buying the 150 knives package on the home shopping network, but I have questions about the quality. What do you suggest? Let me me say this to begin with. You do not need 150 knives because you don't have that many pairs of pants. You understand? (laughs) The thing, if you're going to get knives, you've got to be special with your knives. Knives are like the equivalent of your man of jewelry. And you've got to think about what knife goes with what outfit. (laughs) And you also got to think practically about what you're going to do with that knife every day. So what you want to get is special knives. Get you special knives for special occasions and special outf- outfits. You don't need 150 shitty cheap knives like you get on the home shopping. And they all just like the same plastic thing. I got, I got one right here. Uh, can you see this? Yeah. Yeah. This is called the Sheriff. <laughs> okay. And it's uh, just to paint a picture I- for you. Yeah, it's a very technical looking knife. I got it at a, uh, a flea market. In uh, you, when Augusta, you're buying, Georgia. When you're buying a, a sheriff, make sure you're buying a sheriff and not a sharif. Yeah, not a sharif, not a <laughs> shireef either with, like, pictures of arrows on it and, like, Robin Hood and shit like this. The sheriff, it's got a picture of a couple of, like, Navy Colts on it mm-hmm. and, you know, your, your stereotypical uh, uh, sheriff's badge with the round thing. But, you see, it's got this lovely spring. Can we hear that on the air? Do, so do it in the mic one more time. Oh, I would do it in the mic again. Yeah. It's perfectly illegal. Yeah. See, it's got a lovely spring like that. But the best thing about this knife is you see right down here is it has this spike on the bottom. Is that a bottle opener? No, it's just for, like, fucking people up really bad. Because <laughs> here's the thing, folks. Look, <laughs> every man should carry a knife. It's a symbol of his adulthood and his masculinity. And it's also a very valuable tool for finger cleaning and, like, when shit gets lost in your car and, and screwing in screws and shit like that sometimes. Chicken in, chicken in your teeth. Chicken in your teeth. And I've even used them as a hammer sometimes, hammering things into the wall. Yeah. But the thing is, you do not want to pull a knife on somebody unless shit gets serious. Because when a popo found out about this, you're going to do time. But if you've got a nice spike on the bottom, you can just poke that into somebody and they'll never know what hit them. <laughs> so look at this thing. This will make a gash and they'll be in a lot of pain. You see that? Let me see that. Oh, that spike. Oh, I was that talking about that. That fucks you up. It's not like the Asiatic spike. This is real. No, but the Asiatic spike will fuck you up too. Terry <laughs> Gordon learned it in Asia, and he just put that thing in your thumb. And that was like, see, because the Von Erics had all those lights out moves like the claw and the discus punch. How that was lights out, I don't know. <laughs> but the, the, the Freebirds came back, and they had the Asiatic spike. And unless you can do, the point is, unless you can do like, the Asiatic spike like Terry Bam Bam Gordon, you want to get a good knife like this. Now, what I su- suggest this person does. Uh, this is this is Ronald Stump of Auburn, Alabama. All right. Auburn, uh, Alabama. Uh, Auburn. Oh, All does, right. do you Ronald. know Ronald there? Ronald Stump? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Does he know any nice girls? Huh? 
<laughs> I don't know. Number well, one podcast, by the way, folks, number, in, in Auburn, Alabama. Number one podcast in Auburn, Alabama. That's and let's right. also say hi to Pat's mama who's listening out there. <laughs> Hello, Pat's mama. That's right. It wasn't your fault, mama. It wasn't your fault at all. <laughs> but what I suggest this person does is go to, because he's in Alabama, so they have good flea markets now. The oh, south yeah. is good Yeah, we've got, the, we've got the Lee County Flea Market uh, yeah. right on the other side of uh, Smith Station, Alabama. Yeah, that's the point of the south. The south is good for certain things. It's it's probably a better location for Civil War reenactments than any other part of the country. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> also good for flea markets. Markets and 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 getting uh, catfish at gas stations. Yeah, and <laughs> yep. and so you, if you're living down there, That's take advantage more of a Mississippi of thing. Well, no, no, no. Mississippi's yeah, I thing. A, I got some in Tupelo when I was passing through. Mississippi's thing is chicken on a stick. Oh yeah, that's yeah. what you get in a gas station. In Mississippi is chicken on a stick. Alabama, yeah, we got we got hot catfish, and then specifically in Auburn and Ronald, if you can uh, make it through this, uh, what, what's been purportedly an awful winter in Auburn during. Uh, you know, during the spring and summer months, I hope he's still there. Uh, I used to go down Highway 14 on the way to the Saugahatchee Creek, and there'd be a man there with his card table set up and just a painted sign that said "Hot Fish," and you could get uh, just you know catfish on the bone fried with some uh, fried green tomatoes and okra. Oh, there you go! Yeah. Uh, uh, so good. What's this boy, Ronald? Ronald, treat yourself to some of the hot fish. Yeah, yeah. He should be. He's usually there uh, spring and spring and summer, and then yeah. in the summer he'll have peaches out there as well. Oh shit! We'll get you some yeah. fish, get you some peaches, and get you down a flea market. Yeah. And you know, choose a knife. Like when I chose the sheriff, I, I was a, it was a very big process. There was a knife called Zombie Hunter, which is generally not my style. Uh-huh. But I, you know, I have to admit, I was tempted with it. Uh, there was another one with a scorpion on it, which was really good. You know, find a knife that's you, and more than one knife can be you. It's like jewelry is for the ladies. But make sure get you a collection of some good knives that are really you, and that have practical blades that you can actually do things with. And you know, uh, wear them with different outfits, different occasions. But you do not need a hundred knives because, uh, like, you only have yeah. like so many pockets. Oh, I don't even have that many pairs of pants. I have three. When when I was uh, when I was delivering pizzas, my third night on the job, I was robbed at gunpoint, and so from then on, I just started carrying. I went I went to a flea market, and I found a, a ceremonial knife, I guess, and it had a little chain that you were supposed to wear around your belt. Uh, like a Sikh knife? No, no. It it had a. Uh, what kind of ceremony are you talking about? Like, I, I mean, I'm saying I, I say it's a ceremonial knife in that it wasn't necessarily uh, the most practical knife in the world. It was a large uh, fantasy knife uh, <laughs> with a uh, stallion's head on the hilt, uh, on the handle. It was the the head of a stallion, so I called it the stallion. Yeah, but if you use and... that, somebody's gonna be like, I got stabbed by a Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> I know. guy. That's exactly. almost as bad as like breaking into a double wide trailer and getting attacked by some. You know, hillbilly's uh, samurai sword that he had on the wall. <laughs> yeah. I, so I carried that. I used to carry it in the pizza bag. So if I was to ever get robbed again. You should again, get a more practical knife for but something like the sheriff here I highly recommend. Well, I now actually do have a, a knife similar to that. I used to have one with an alligator on it that I love. It's called a gator knife. But mm. I gave it to my friend Jay Morris because he needed a knife one night. And he gave it to some woman he knew. And it's, you know, cherche la femme. <laughs> <laughs> So but anyway, yeah, get, you know, get you a good knife. I'll get you a good gun, too. What would you carry as a gun? <laughs> 38 Special is what I have. Oh, yeah, those are good. Those yeah, are good. Uh, just a knife. But let's say any gun. Any gun. Uh, that, I, I've always just wanted a uh, revolver. Then that's that's what I got. I that's, like revolvers, that's, that's That's what I like. Uh, yeah, do you have a gun? Or I do, do not have a gun. I've never use, shot a gun. You use spears, though. We know that. Yeah, yeah. So what what kind of, kind of spear? spear do you like? <laughs> like Asakai? Like the Zulu? Or, or? No, I mean, there's there's good uh, boar hunting spears okay. that kind of have barbs on the side and are, are hooked. They almost look like one of those contraptions you cut tree branches. With. Yeah, but um, one of the gr- best uh, gun stories that I've ever heard was uh, back in the nineteen uh, late eighties, early nineties. There was a uh, football player named Benny Blades of the uh, vaunted Blades family, um, uh-huh. like the Street Shark. Yeah, and uh, there was a Street. There was shark Benny named Blades, Blades. There was Brian Blades. There was a ton of guys named Blades. There was a Street Shark named Blades who, uh, when it first came out, he was the guy with the roller blades, and okay. then later. They changed his name to Streaks because the Rollerblade, I guess, because the Rollerblade company, because Rollerblade was still a, is, is a brand name. <laughs> oh, so okay. they, they weren't too <laughs> Do happy. Do you know who my favorite was on Street Sharks? Uh, I don't know. Jack. Moby Lick. Moby Lick. That's right. The, like Orca Killer Whale guy with the big tongue. Yeah. You I know. was always partial to, uh, uh, what was it, Rocco, the Mako shark that with the guitar? That one was cool. <laughs> Man, remember that show? Where they fight, they bite, they jerk off at six every night. <laughs> They just look at their watch, come 6 o'clock, and they're like, Jossom, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> but Benny Blades, um, Lomas Brown, who's a, a Hall of Fame a football player, was telling the story. 
and they were playing in Seattle mm-hmm. uh, for the Seahawks. And they were at a, uh, a strip club, a gentleman's club, and uh, some guys were giving old Benny some uh, some business, yeah, which spilled out to the uh, to the outside in the parking lot. And they were talking a little bit of uh, talking a little poo to Benny and uh, and Lomas and all those guys. And Benny went to the back of his car and he pulled out a bazooka, which I always thought was the most awesome thing ever. <laughs> it is, but unless they have a tank, it's not too practical. <laughs> But just the move. It's, it's just, just, like, a, just a, f- a shoulder-fired rocket-propelled grenade launcher. Yeah. Wowzers. Why not? I mean, that's pretty sweet. It's the early 90s. <laughs> yeah, it's the early 90s. It's the early exactly. 90s. Yeah. That is awesome. You don't even have to load it. You can just brandish the fucking thing. Exactly. Just the concept alone. Just yeah. having a grenade launcher is... For the record, my gun would either be a Ruga Bakiro, a Ruga Blackhawk, <laughs> or a, a Walker Conversion. Okay. Yeah. I, I like the, the, the good old Smith & Wesson 38. Or, yeah, I, had or, a, I had a model fifteen three. Or if I had to go uh, bigger, I'd go like a, a Colt, uh, Python, or Anaconda. Yeah, you know something like I that. I like I like single action guns because my honestly, yeah. even when I have like a, a thirty eight, I'll usually fire it like a single action. Yeah, I always I always do cock it back if I'm if I'm trying to aim, but it's, yeah. it is it is fun just to get you know get a double, nice double action shot off. All right. So, Ronald Stump. So, Ronald, get you a good knife at one of the flea markets and some peaches and mm. some catfish. Take, yeah. it, take advantage of living in the, the good parts of living in Alabama because, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, you know, the weed ain't legal there. Yeah. So, you no. got to have some fun. It's been decriminalized in Mississippi, though. Really? really? Yeah. Yeah, because they can't afford the jails anymore. <laughs> and Alabama's probably not far behind, honestly. It's not because they're, like, liberal crusaders. It's because they literally don't have any money to lock up people for pot anymore. So the next letter is from a youngster, a young listener. Oh, okay, okay. That's okay. been uh, that hey, he's actually even listen, though this is marked explicit. We marked this explicit, yeah, yeah. but it's not necessarily you know. Yeah, it's, it's just there's some swearing sometimes. Yeah, you know, yeah. but it, it can be explicit. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Just, there's just mainly swearing. Yeah, I mean, if you listen to the words. cute ep- animals episode, he probably so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. thinking that we need to have more cute episodes. Anyway. We do. Um, Dear Mr. Goodnight, uh, he put an extra O in, in Goodnight, so it looks more like Goodnight. Good Good like uh, shit. Dear Mr. Goodnight, <laughs> my name is Jacob, and I'm 11 years old. It's I'm a terrible having... name. Yeah, I know. Oh, uh, it's just a name. Call him like something good, like Ralph or, or you know Flavius. He can't help it. His parents gave him the name. Okay. He's asking. He wants your help. Oh yeah, I help him. I help him. You just shit on him, right? I'm sorry, Jacob. It's not. But you know that name will make you a man, like like man named Sue, the John Cash. (laughs) Dear Mister Goodnight, my name is Jacob, and I'm 11 years old. I'm having problems with bullies. They shake me down every week and steal my 4-H club dues. How should I defend myself? Thank you, Jacob Brenton, Billings, Montana. Okay, Billings. I've been through there too. I've been to Billings, Montana. I've stopped at a, um, a thrift store. And I tried to get, I figured I could get some nice Western shit there. Yeah. But I really couldn't. The only thing I got was in the fucking book section. They had like a translated like anime book. It was like Shonen Jump or some shit. <laughs> and I got that in fucking Montana. Wow. If you can believe that. So, so no, I, no bolo yeah. ties, just anime. No, I was looking for like hats and, yeah. and, and shirts and shit for, yeah. because I look so good in Western. You got to earn that stuff there. Well, I earn everything everywhere <laughs> as I go because I, the thing is, I earn everything I do, you understand? Because I wear my shit like on the streets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Some people that think that, oh, they're going to look a certain way, but they only do it when they're safe. And I wear my shit on the streets, so I've earned every fucking thing I got because I have to take shit all the time, you understand? <laughs> and I'll give them shit. Which brings us back to this thing with the bullets uh, that the boy was talking about. They are stealing this money for the 4-H. The 4-H is a wonderful institution, American institution. Yeah. Up there with Head, Chautauqua. Heart, hands and health. Yeah, and hogs. Too. People <laughs> don't realize that because that's like the fifth H in the 4-H. But what this one needs to do is, is there's a way, son, that you can, like, stop the bullets. And that's sometimes you've got to meet fire with dynamite. And the dynamite <laughs> that you need is the martial arts. Because you are still, if I could, Mr. Good, I could do his whole life over, he would learn like you did, Pat, the martial arts. And this boy is young enough. Which martial arts should he learn? Gong Fu. Like the, <laughs> like the great Kabuke. You don't want to learn karate. 
You know, because Steve O can learn karate, but you got to learn gong fu because and that will fuck them up. What's what is gong fu involved? Is it like judo? Is it like jujitsu? I don't know. Is it's it like, like slapping people with hands and kicking them in a, with your feet and shit, like <laughs> Bruce Lee does. It's because didn't he do gong fu? Uh, or did he do do ji kon do? Ji kon do. Ji kon do is yeah. Uh, learn some of that shit too. If you watch the one where he's got the banana colored suit on and he goes up to pagoda and he's tapping that stick on the ground and he kicks uh, uh, the basketball player's Kareem ass. Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah, yeah. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Game of death. Game of yeah, death. Yeah, he beats up a, a blind man. But you you got to learn mm-hmm. how to do that. Uh, so uh, watch some of the Bruce Lee. Take some karate classes. But here's the thing, because if you go to the karate class at the mall and you know this, Pat, because you studied the arts, like. The karate class at the mall is like the improv level one or something. <laughs> There's like a lot of hobbyists and stuff to take it, you know, and that's fine. But they know some serious shit that they're not telling you. So what you got to do is after the class, you go up to teachers and you ask them, how can I spit mist? <laughs> <laughs> because the greatest yes. thing that you could do in the martial arts is like the great Kabuke. Spit the green mist. And then, yeah, then the son of the great Kabuke, the great Muta, mm-hmm. he spit the mist. Yeah. Uh, Killer Khan. Yep. Uh, you got to learn how to spit the mist. Yeah. There's always a, there's always a sub studio in the in the back. Yeah, there's and, a, there's the studio <laughs> that's all like nice, but there's the sub studio in the back where you do like chin ups on rebar. Yeah, and you break just blocks there's, of ice. And there's it's the secret, very cold yeah, in there. Sound, I like the fact that it's cold, but that chin up sound really tiring. There's and, the and, secret and, Fight Club. Yeah, yeah, what you want to do is learn the mist. Pat, you know about the mist. What, what are some of the mists that colors? There's of the, the mist? green mist. The green mist, which the, is the Kabuke classic. The red mist. The color of money, I like to call that one. The red mist. But I would say the that blue mist. You. But I think the blue mist is the way to go. And Jacob, this takes a long time to learn the blue mist. But ain't no bullies are going to mess with you if you blast the blue. Go yeah. up to the biggest one. Spit the blue mist. Always in fuck with the biggest one first. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because that'll scare that. What, what does the blue mist exactly do? You don't even want to know. Wait, wait, you, you, Jacob, you go learn a mist. You learn a mist, preferably the blue, but whichever ones that they can teach kids. In where, where's this guy from Saskatchewan? Uh, he's from uh, Montana. Montana. Is close enough. Well, wherever the ones you can learn in Montana, you learn a blue mist, and you tag these kids with the mist. And you go to the biggest one, you blow the mist in his face, it's done. Okay, if that doesn't work, if that doesn't work, which is pretty much impossible, but you're always going to have a backup. And if that doesn't work, just blade. And if once they see blood running from your head, that'll scare them bad yeah. enough. Yep. So you learn the mist, you learn some karate, and you blade. And you find the biggest one, you go to town on these boys. And then next thing you know, you'll be hitting them up. You'll be, you'll be bringing in more money to that 4-H when you're doing a racket shaking these boys down every day. You know, it's called reparations <laughs> is what it is. It's like when they sign a treaty at the end of the war and, you know, they've got to pay war damages now. So, yeah. they go, so you're going to kind of milk them for a little while. You're going to get one of their older brother's Camaros. Yeah. This, He's gonna, that, it's, it just reminded me uh, when you said there's a back room in the karate studio. Um, this is one of those things that I can't remember if I actually read this or if it was something – it was a dream. But at some point – That happens to me a lot. You know what I mean? Like you'll have something that happens in a dream and then you're like, did it really – and I remember I repeated it to somebody at some point. I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, David Duchovny has like a fight club that Bob Dylan's in. <laughs> <laughs> Who is in the Bob Dylan, that David was, Duchovny that was fight? The, well, probably probably like, several Wilburys. Is that like is that like the bastard sons of Lee Marvin? So that like Nick Cave and Iggy Pop are in it. I'd love to see Iggy Pop fight. That would be funny. But like that thing, it's like it's so weird that it sounds like a dream, but it's also just weird enough to be true that Bob Dylan and David Duchovny yeah, run a fight. You spit mist in your face, David. Yeah, you give it a red mist, man. <laughs> I'm fucked you up, Jim Jeremy. <laughs> with my Jim chicken Jarmusch. wing. Jim Jarmusch is almost certainly involved. I mean, who wouldn't want to see, you know, Tom Waits and, and Bob Dylan finally duke it out? You know I know. What I mean? Tom Petty, I think, would be in there, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, dude. Tom, and Tom Petty is sinewy. Tom yeah. Petty is crazy. He's man. wiry, dude. He's got an overbite, though, so you got to be, you know, you get him in the, in the mouth yeah. and you know, I'll take him out. Well, you got to watch your fingers, though, man. You, you, could, you could mess up. Well, he That's punched why you, you, all, you never Tom Petty punch. wants. Here's one thing, uh, Jacob. Never punch with your fist. Always use your hand and slap open because you get the same amount of force. There's more area, and you also don't break your knuckles. Exactly. Yeah. Very yeah. good, Pet. Very good. Yeah. And it's legal in mid-'80s WWF. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The take old a, days. With- take a tip from Sharkeisha. Yeah. Has everybody seen Sharkeisha? My dad told me that one. Sharkeisha, Okay, so Thanksgiving, I'm home. I'm hanging out. I'm looking at Twitter, and uh, 
it just says hashtag Sharkeisha. And I'm like, I don't, I, what is this? And, uh, the reason I think it, it, it kind of got buried a little bit cause it did drop on Thanksgiving. I think a lot of people were just absent from, uh, from social media that day. Uh, basically this, I mean, it's just a girl sucker punching this other girl, but she does it exactly like you said with, yeah. uh, with a palm strike, palm strike. Palm strike, right? The palm the, heel, yep. boom. Yep. That's my purse. Another good one. Another good one is if you backhand somebody and whap them with like the the like the wrist. Yeah, yeah. That just boom like that. Yeah, you can do some damage. Jacob, also, yeah, you probably desperate don't times do this. call for desperate measures. Yeah, you probably want to do this. Go like, mist first. Well, you you can go. You can put your keys in your fingers too and go for their windpipe, but that, it's probably not that serious. Yeah, you'd get in school point. suspension. Yeah, for yeah, that. don't do that. So yeah, do the uh, the non lethal force and the mist. Yeah, <laughs> and shake them boys down, son. And do it when they're not expecting. Don't yeah. don't ever challenge somebody to a fight. Just do a fight. Yeah, exactly. Just just do it. You know what you did, Shane. Oh. Oh. People are learning things. Yeah. That their life is their quality of life is really improving yeah. with this. Yeah, and by the way, if you got a question at the Good Spot on Twitter, but uh, 140 character questions. You, yeah, well, I can, and I, it, I can if undo you, the tweet up. Actually, and we have an email too. If you want to get into greater detail with us, it's the Good at Gmail dot com. Yeah, Facebook dot com slash the Good yeah, You let me know about either of them. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll answer them. And we'll, again, we'll ladies, even love to hear about your financial opportunities. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you again, Alexis, we're we're down. Yeah, we're up for money, money, personal appearances, and once again, women. Like seriously, if you listen to this show and you're like, this guy's voice is so sexy, I got to be with this man, honey. We do it. Well, the next question is from a lady. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's what yeah. I Tell her the answer is yes, you understand. Yeah. Uh, I like this. <laughs> Dear Mr. Goodnight, I'm so happy to write you. I'm a huge mm. fan of yours. The pleasure um, is mutual, honey. <laughs> I like this girl already. She got a picture attached with this? Oh, no, she doesn't. Uh, I'm currently in a relationship. Oh, that's and a mistake. Get out of it, honey. There, you can do better. My boyfriend and I are currently in a debate. He is a big fan of the Almond Brothers. Mm. I myself contend that, that Skinner is a... Well, uh, look, obviously better, you're too uh, look, good for I him. Can I finish reading this? <laughs> that Skinner is a, qual- is a better band. This is ruin our, ruining our relationship. There's a lot of tension. Since uh, you are an expert on all things Skinner and you were my ultimate dream man... What is she doing with this dickhead? <laughs> Honey, get Could you a you ticket pl- to Los Angeles right out here. I'm like your own personal Ron Van Zant, 24 7 every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm like Ron Van Zant, I'm like your own Ron Van Zant, Gary Rossington, Ed King, and Billet Powell just mixed in one. You understand? Can you give me an argument to give to my boyfriend to say that Skinner is better and make him change his mind? Love and kisses, Jessica Ritchie, Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, you got to get out of that Nebraska climate, honey, and just come out here. First thing you want to do is 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 just tell this boy that Almond Brothers, you're drawing a line in the sand, and if you don't come over to my Skinner camp, I'm leaving. And then you leave, and you come out <laughs> to Los Angeles. And we'll listen to all the Skinner you want on it. Because let, let, let's face this fact. Skinner was better than the Almond Brothers. Some of us are going to get controversial here. The Almond Brothers were better musicians, yes. There's no doubt about that. And th- technically speaking, they were a better live act because they were more improvisational. But Skinner had the songs, man. I mean, Statesboro Blues, yeah, their guitar playing is good on that, but this is boring beer commercial, uh, classic <laughs> rock station at like 2 a.m. shit. And I ain't even going to get into that solo career. Yeah. Because Greg Allman, I'm no angel. I love that Terrible song. song. That shit should come oh, with a fucking. Serious, I fucking Ripper. love. Butt-wise I'm no angel. Oh, I God. love it. Ugh, God. I think it's great. For I don't the care. Longest time I thought it was a late era Bob Seger song. I love so Bob Seger late. too. Oh, God, Bob Seger's the man. Uh, let me show you my tattoo. Let me rock you, cradle. Uh, Come on, love me, baby. It was better off when he was a share, for fuck's sake. See, <laughs> there's no share with Leonard Skinner and shit like this. There is eventually Kid Rock, but we do not count post Ron Van Zandt yeah, yeah, Skinner. Yeah, yeah. We do not count post Ron Van Skinner. Sk- look, you know, you could have like a jammy blues band like that, or you can have like 
the Southern Rock equivalent of the Who or the Rolling Stones or one of those when they were actually good. And that's what Skinner is. Skinner had the songs, man. Skinner was hard rock shit. Almond Brothers, I mean, fuck, it's just like a southern version of, like, Grateful Dead or some shit like that, but with better musicians. You dump this boy. I'll tell you what, honey. You tell this boy, all right, you know what? We're going to listen to two songs, all right? And you pick you a Skinner song, and then you have him play Mountain Jam. And while he's playing Mountain Jam, you get in a, you leave the house, you go to the airport, you get in a plane, you fly out to California, you come to Miss a good, nice place, we'll have earth-shaking sex while we're listening to Second Helping. I drive you back to the airport. I put you on a plane. All right, you go back to the house. I pay you for the taxi and all this shit if people send us some money so we can do that. And then you go back to that old boyfriend and you tell him right as Mountain Jam ends and you get back. You say, <laughs> you say that wasn't skinned, really. It didn't it accomplish more in less time. <laughs> so I, that's make your case for Elman Brothers. Well, here's the thing. I, I, I actually I like dissension in the ranks. I, I like no, no. I like Skinnerd uh, more than the Allman Brothers, but I do love the Allman Brothers. And I will say I, I'm a big Allman Brothers fan, but I have only listened to Mountain Jam in its entirety once. Because you, really... you only have a year to spare ever to ever so often, right? You know I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's no need to hear it more than once. That said, uh, my uncle Steve was actually at uh, the recording of Live at Fillmore East, Ooh, which is pretty that's sweet. Pretty good. Yeah, and he no, just he just dropped that on me casually. Like I bought like the deluxe edition of that record that had like both both full concerts. Yeah, and he was like, "Oh, yeah, I was at that." I gave my dad that for Christmas. One it was day. great. Yeah. It's great. You know what? I, I mean, you know I don't, I don't have anything. But the, I love it when people that are our our dad's ages or guys that are in their middle like fifty sixty year old will drop those things just so casually. Uh, I have. Yeah. A, I gotta say this. Over Christmas, it was our relatives. We got an Uncle Bill. He's cheap as hell. He made us go Dutch at the Cracker Barrel once when I was still a college student. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a great guy though. He he's like Tom Bosley, if you remember the dad from Happy Days. Okay. And he he used to work for the Department of Defense, but he also had been like a history professor. So he's one of those guys who loves to just like go into these boring fun vans. Uh it's interesting, but uh you know Pat Priest from the Monsters, uh her mother, because this is actually what it sounds like. Yeah. Her mother um was I'm actually surprised. uh That's what he sounds like. the Department of the Treasury. He, he's he's like Tom Bosley. She mm-hmm. worked for the Department of the Treasury under the Eisenhower administration. So we, we're, it's Christmas, and we're over, and Uncle Bill's there, and he's telling all his same dull fun facts about whatever. And then right at the end of it, he drops a bomb that, oh, yeah, I was, uh, I was there at the rally when Martin Luther King gave the I Have a Dream speech. And it's like everybody's <laughs> hit the floor. Jesus. Because Bill, a white, very white guy. Yeah, It's yeah. like, good damn it, Bill. I've known you for like 10 years and or whatever. And he saved it all to the end. Yeah, and it's yeah. like your whole, at, at, during a game of Trivial Pursuit, oh, if yeah. you please, which my mama won and not him. Was it the blue <laughs> Trivial Pursuit? It was the 1980s one, which uh, was wonderful mm. because that means like I, get, I, I can get all the old people questions. Question. Yeah, the blue one is is tough because you know they still have the questions about the Soviet Union and oh, yeah. I know Douglas whenever Fairbanks. there's an Olympic thing, it, you always got to think about like the German is and yeah, like, yeah. is it going to be West Germany or East Germany or whatever. When I was in like eighth grade and I started seventh grade, I guess is when I started listening to Jimi Hendrix and I was listening to Jimi Hendrix in the car with my mom and she was like, "Hey, I saw him one time." I was like, "What?" And she goes, "Yeah, he was playing a show with that." Who's that woman with the scratchy voice that she does me and Bobby McGee? I was like, Janice Joplin? She was like, yeah, yeah. Like, she went to the Atlanta Pop Festival, which is the same year as yeah. Woodstock. Almond Brothers are there, Hendrix, Joplin. And then, uh, famously, Johnny Winter blew out the power in uh, Midtown Atlanta. Like, just the yeah. whole, the whole like, because he, you know, had everything hooked up. Doing everybody a service, really. Had everything. <laughs> <laughs> it could be worse. It could be Edgar Winter. No, fucking dude. Which one did Silva Train? <laughs> I think Johnny. Johnny. Do you remember that? That's my favorite Rolling Stones song. Yeah. And he did that Johnny. shitty version of it. And, well, and then Edgar, of course, did uh, uh, Free Ride, which I love. Oh, God. And uh, Frankenstein, Frankenstein, which I love. Oh, God. You're a pervert. Dude, Edgar you're Winter's great. Absolute... Edgar Winter's oh, great. Oh, God. I don't care. He was scary looking, too. Yeah. He, there's the two albino brothers. What's not the, to love? Um, the yeah. mountain is high. Oh. Valley my, uh, my dad actually recount seeing um elton john twice in hawaii and him in like just these small venues going absolutely insane yeah and she's like and here's the thing has everybody's dad seen bachman turner overdrive i feel like it was a requirement 
Yeah, and they always have. They the wouldn't same give story. you your college diploma in the seventies until you yeah, saw. BTO. I mean, it was always the same story. Where it was just like, yeah, I saw Bachman Turner Overdrive play at the Liberty Bowl, <laughs> and it was the loudest concert in the history of Tennessee. <laughs> Like in my case, my dad was like, "Yeah, they played it in you know Camden, New Jersey, at the racetrack, and it was the loudest concert in the history of New Jersey." Well, there were a lot of bands back then that were really loud but weren't necessarily really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they all went to go see. Grand BTO. Funk was another. Well, Grand Funk is actually. I love good. Grand Funk. And uh, Kiss was another one that was really loud, but <laughs> yeah, not necessarily good. Although not many dads went to that because you know Kiss was. Sort of 14 year olds music yeah. and still is, really. Yeah. 14 year olds of all ages. I know my dad saw Bruce Springsteen on the Born to Run tour and he didn't even like He was just playing at, at, at the arena in Auburn. He was like, oh, I'll go. And, yeah. And when I saw Bruce Springsteen in 2009, when I came back, I was telling my dad, I was like, oh my God, it was amazing. He played for like three hours. And my dad was like, yeah, he did that in the 70s, too. <laughs> yeah, it's not like we're going to be like, yeah, you know, to our, our kids, be like, yeah, I remember one time we went to the. Dude, yeah, we saw Mumford and Sons. Like, we're, we're never going to do that. We won't have that pleasure. Unless there's, not. unless there's justice in the world and the drive-by truckers. Yeah, I was going to say. You know what I was going to say? Or, or like the uh, wrestling. It'll have to be a wrestling. Like, I saw the Macho Man or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I did get to see the Undertaker fight at least once. You know. So your your advice to old Jessica Ritchie here. Oh, is, Jessica is, you know, uh, like, remember that movie Hercules? Like, drop to zero and get with the hero. You know what I'm saying? Think that's like that. cool I think that's from Cool as Ice. Cool as Ice. <laughs> okay, well, Dusty Rhodes said it too, but you you get the point on it. You know, you can do a lot better than this almond lover. Tell him to go yeah. fucking make out with uh, uh, Warren Haynes or some shit. <laughs> yeah, and get the fuck on a plane to Los Angeles, and we can live in like a little skinned paradise all our own. Yeah, but no, I mean, my I you know my argument for the Almond Brothers extends all the way up to brothers and sisters, and then I don't have an argument anymore. Honestly, uh, mine is Idlewild. So their second album, I second album. One, <laughs> so beginnings. One that, yeah, yeah. Remember Basically. the one in the '90s, like when Woodstock Two was out, had the big mushroom on the front. Yeah, yeah. nobody left to run with in a mall. I yeah. had that one. <laughs> Peek it, peeking at the beacon. I had that one. Oh, God, I had that one. Uh, oh man, that sounds <laughs> horrendous. No, it was fantastic. I'm not. I'm not here to fucking shit on the Almond Brothers. I love the Almond Brothers. I like but, they had good. They but had good except beers. for Jessica and Melissa, those songs. Are, uh, I don't know them. Oh, Jessica, the one that's like. <laughs> A- A.K.A. just being eaten alive by mosquitoes at Stone Mountain waiting for the laser show to oh, start. Yeah. <laughs> Slash watching a commercial for a southern grocery store or yeah. something. You know? That's what Jessica is to me. I swear, because that happened every summer yeah. when I was a kid. I was dragged to Stone Mountain. I'd invariably be sitting on a blanket being eaten alive by fucking mosquitoes with yeah. that. And it's like, not the worst thing that ever happened. Coors. Yeah. yeah. When, Cures. Yeah. <laughs> Colorado <laughs> but, Kool-Aid. But, but, you know, you stay for the laser show, and it's all it's oh, all good. God, yeah. Is there a water park at Stone Mountain? No. Not yet. There was... I, <laughs> like I got the mean, Stonewall the, Jackson the, water slide. I got to figure this out, because... There's a water... There are waterfalls there. Yeah. I, in certain areas. We, we must have gone somewhere. There there was somewhere near Stone Mountain that we went that had, like, a little tiny water park. Yeah. Was really I mean, there's great. all sorts of, like, you know, kind of yeah. renegade... And it wasn't, it wasn't white water park, or anything like that. Know, it was just, like, a nice, like... I don't know. Out Sorry, Lilburn or some place like that. Yeah, it was good, but th- yeah, that's the that, that's what that's what Jessica is to me. But no, Melissa's great. Blue Sky, Blue Sky is fucking Blue untouchable. Sky, I, Particularly I mean, yeah. if you get uh, there's a live version because uh, Dickie Betts is playing the lead on the version on Eat a Peach. You can find there's a really great live version with Dwayne because they wrote the song uh, right before Dwayne died. So there's a live version of just them kind of running the song with Dwayne actually playing on it instead of Dickie, and it's really really good. Dicky Betts blood type is Budweiser. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, I'm like textbook alcoholic. Let's just be honest. Yeah, yeah. hell of a singer though. I mean, uh, yeah, you I'm know, not a, I'm not a fan of, of Ramblin' Man. See, I was just, I was just about to say, I love Ramblin' Man. I love it. I like Ramblin' Man. I mean, it's, I think it's a great Waffle House jukebox song. Oh, fucking a, yeah, no, it, it's, uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I always listen. You know, it's one of those things. Oh, this old corner thing. But every time I hear it, yeah. I, my foot starts tapping, uh-huh. especially that solo in the middle. Like, all right. So great. We're on different planets right now. And no. sometimes if you go to the, like the CBS or something, they'll play Ramblin' Man. They always cut the solo at the end. Yeah, like, yeah. Don't do that. You don't cut the solo at the end of Ramblin' Man, and you don't cut the solo at the end of Spirit in the Sky by yeah. Norman Greenbaum, and which is actually cut, the best part of the song. And you don't cut the 
good stuff at the end of seven 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 ninety three eleven. Oh yeah, or the Freebird. Old, yeah, no, I'll say yeah. this. Oh god, Freebird. There's no. Although point I could of Freebird. go, I could go with the cutting the end of November rain. With, that the, yeah, there's no point of Freebird unless you play the full thing because the yeah, ending right. with the bolero is actually the best. Yeah, part. that's the best part. Is where it starts. Because I mean, you know, we, we've been honest about Skinner on here, and we've yeah. all said Freebird is not as good. I'll be honest with you, folks. I have learned this firsthand. When and you probably noticed Rivers when people in the radio long songs just means the DJ has to go to the toilet. Oh, I know that yeah. for a fact, yeah. And I think that explains Stairway to Heaven. Yeah. That explains Freebird. And I think that's why Hey Jude, which was not the Beatles' best work, was their biggest hit. Yeah. Because yeah. that infectious na 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 gives the DJ a lot of time to well, take a piss. Well, we can actually go straight back to Dwayne Allman with that. Uh, my The only, honest to God, like the only Beatles cover I feel like that's worth the damn, besides uh, With a Little Help from My Friends by Joe Cocker, is uh, Wilson Pickett's version of Hey Jude. Yeah. Which he recorded at Muscle Shoals. And at the end, end of it during the na 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 part fucking Dwayne Allman just comes screaming in with this amazing guitar solo yeah. It's one of the best moments Great. in music. It's better than Elvis's version which is really <laughs> Did Elvis do a version of Hey Jude? Yeah, but you know he d- it was when he was recording in like Memphis or something, and he was so – the song was stuck in his head, so he made everybody run through it before they, like, they got the serious yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But they play it all the time on Elvis' radio, uh-huh. and it just – it sounds like just Elvis just wanted to sing the part at the end. Jude, 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 because he does that every freaking time. Jude, 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 Jessica Ritchie, thank you for writing in. Yeah, um, at the end You've of the day, you've got Almond Brothers song. <laughs> I mean, I think yeah. it's it's almost the same. It, it's as asinine an argument as the Beatles versus the Stones, in my opinion, because it is so apples and oranges. Because yeah, Skinner, I, I think, she, I I think, think like, this is just a pretext for yeah, her to. I, she yeah, wants to get with me. I don't blame her. Everybody does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Beatles Stones thing. I, I like both. I mean, I'm a Stones man. I'm a Stones guy too. Yeah. But I gotta say, I like guy. both, and uh, I I much prefer Skinner to the. I grew Almond up Brothers, in a Stones so. household. I don't know, but again, I do think it's apples and oranges. I grew up in a Beatles household and went Stones. Can't anyway. predict that sort of thing. No. Sociology be damned. All right. right. So number four. This is our fourth letter. It's from Brad Conway of Eugene, Oregon. Uh, yo, oh, good. Billy Jack Haynes. Yeah. Yo, good night. <laughs> I was listening to the episode where you described the Red Sylvine song, and I thought it was absolutely poetic. I try. Um, I am thinking about getting into CB radio based on your inspiration. What buying tips do you have for somebody to go into CB Radio, best wishes, Brad Conway. Well, you know, radio. there's never, I think, been a better time to get into CB Radio. Because in the 70s, you actually, like, would need a license sometime and shit like that. And nowadays, like, it's all off because nobody uses the damn thing anymore. Yeah. And they've got twice as many channels. So, you, you, you know, you go down again to the flea market or the thrift store. Uh, you know, sometimes you look for the old radio. It looks like it's got the crystals in it. Yeah. You know, they got crystals for all the different stations. It's like it's got like little magical things in it. Mm-hmm. Or you know, you can just get like you a decent like cheapo Cobra one or something like that at Walmart. The ch- here's the thing with with CB radio: it's all about the antenna, and that's the pain in the ass of CB radio. It really is yeah. because you need like a big whip antenna. I was gonna say yeah. if your antenna reception. isn't uh, whack yeah. at overpasses, you know you're doing yeah. yeah. <laughs> the best you can do though is you know if you're on a budget, uh, there's certain magnet magnetic mounting antennas that are all right. Right. They're better than the $10 Walmart one, which will get you started in the fix. You go online, you get one of them. You know, you play, and, and you know, the CB is, is a magical thing. Let's face that fact. That's the thing. People don't realize this now, but all the technology nowadays, your Steve Jobs and all this shit, all he did, America was a cow. And Steve Jobs was like, I have to castrate this animal by cutting off of its nuts. It was a bull, <laughs> the bull of the woods, if you will. And Steve Jobs <laughs> cut the nuts off of America because technology used to be guy stuff. Yeah. It was hands-on things like like CB radios. You're fooling with a dial. Do I hear a human voice? Is someone out there? It was guy stuff. And now CB, I mean, now technology is a little sissy thing like these phones, girl-sized fingernail uh, keyboards on them. It looks like a makeup contact and it fits in a purse because that's what the, this, the, the phone 
And the iPod is all just a girl's fashion accessory. It's all it is. You need something like a man's thing, a CB. You know what I'm talking about? You get, to, you get your ears on, good buddy. You know, you yeah. put that in your car. You go out there and you listen to the crazy people talking about how nobody celebrates Easter anymore, which is what I was listening to one time. And are you listening to the truckers or out here in L.A.? If you speak Spanish, you know, there's plenty of that on yeah, there, too. Yeah. yeah. And, but there's nothing funnier, though. You have to get the right car for your CB because there's nothing funnier than seeing like a to- uh, like a early 90s Toyota Tracel with a giant with a CB. Long, oh, I've, uh, I've been in the wrong car for a CB many times. Yeah. Because, you know, you, I would recommend a yeah. Jimmy, a GMC Jimmy. GMC I Jimmy. had one of them, That's but I, I did have. not have a CB in it. You had one, too. They were, I, I liked it. Well, you know what? I had one, but mine didn't have a CB. But what it did have was an old car phone and. Yeah. <laughs> just stick it off the, the top. Of the oh, yep. man. Fuck. I used to have this white Crown Victoria uh-huh. when I lived in Boston. And that everybody knew that was like Goodnight's car. Yeah, right, that was right. like the Goodnight Mobile. Yeah. I and I had your the car fucking... was like the, the Suburban with the tank treads on it. The Chevy Suburban? That's my ultimate dream car. Oh, okay. This was my practical everyday car. Yeah. And it was a white Crown Victoria. It was, used to be like a, a, I think it was Rotterdam, New York police mm-hmm. cruiser. And it had a CB radio. I had a Monet in the front. I had uh, a little pic, like sticker, Dora the Explorer hidden in the back. <laughs> so that, like, if any girls was in the car, they didn't feel like they were getting arrested or something like this. It, it was a wonderful car. And I, I really miss it uh, badly. I had, like, disguises in yeah. the trunk and things like that. Yeah. I had comic books in there. Uh, graphic novels, if you will. <laughs> Uh, a, a book on the history of the Boston Celtics I had in there. It, it was a hell of a car. It really was. So if there's one sort of buying tip that you would give to Brad, what would it be? Get a good antenna. Yeah. Get yeah. you a good. It's all about the antenna. You can what about pretty the, much any CB radio. What about will the do crystals? You. The crystals is if you're looking for a used one, they got to have the crystals in them. Because the, the crystal, because like every station tunes in on a crystal. So it's the damnedest thing because they got crystals in them. And, you know, you think about like crystals. I used to go to the fucking uh, New Age stores and shit. Uh, or like those things at the mall <laughs> where they got the unicorns. Natural, natural yeah, wonders. and I used to try to put them in a CB to see like what kind of channels I could get. Like if they were What kind of channels did you get? They didn't work, so I didn't Third get Third Realm nothing. channel? I yeah. was going to say, yeah, maybe I'll get like Isengard's like CB or something. They're like, yeah, we need more orcs <laughs> over by the fucking Tunnel of Despond or some shit like that. <laughs> but, you know, but if, you know, it, 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 you got to get good cr- – if you're going to get one at a flea market, make sure it's got the crystals in it. But really, any CB will do you. It's all yeah. about the antenna. We got yeah. one more letter. All right. Let's hear um, it. Um, dear Mr. Goodnight, I'm looking to get off the grid, off the radar, if you will, mm. because I do not trust the chemtrails that are spread across the sky <laughs> and the mind control apparatuses that allow the government to control my brain. Yeah, it's called I, Google. I I have ta- they spy on you all the fucking time um, now. I have, I have taken to smearing mayo on my windows, but that does not work. I still hot. feel controlled. What do you suggest? Sincerely yours, Lester Hill, Tennessee. Oh, Lester. I've heard of that guy. Well, first of all, mayo was a bad idea, Lester, because it'll smell terrible after a while. And, you know, and let's, I, prefer, I, for one, prefer Miracle Whip. I don't know about y'all, but I, I, it's tangier. You know, I'm, not a, I'm not a mayo guy. Yeah, I understand that. Mayo is one of those things that is best in small quantities. Yeah. Fine. yeah. And you don't want them on the windows. And, you know, Lester, <laughs> like I would say, if you, know, if you want to fake your own death, change your address, Daddy. Because, you know, if you come back to collect the mail the next day, it just don't work. It's harder to get off the grid these days. I, I suggest that you, you find, like, an alternate identity and just live that way half the time. And so that nobody really knows who you are. It's like, you remember the Joker? Yeah, yeah. The Batman? Mm-hmm. And there was that movie with uh, the asshole who, who was a Lakers fan there that played him. Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson yeah. And it was like the Joker was a big asshole. Mm-hmm. But um, there's a part in the movie where he kills Jack Palance. Mm-hmm. And he says... I've been dead once already. It's very liberating. And that's the thing. That's the thing. Just have Lester Hill disappear and then be whatever you want to be, Jack. I've heard of this Lester Hill guy, and I wish he would disappear. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard he's a hole. He's kind of an asshole, but you know he's probably old. He's seen the world change a lot. He probably still hasn't got used to those, you know, things that we take for granted now, like the Thirteenth Amendment and and all this (laughs) shit. You know, and you know, he figured nowadays he's living under Obama. He doesn't know what's going on in his head. So you know, people look for. They they look for easy ways out, like smearing mayonnaise on their windows and (laughs) faking their death. But uh, yeah, less less does a. Last is an odd bird, but uh, I heard his AM show when I was driving through Tennessee once, and <laughs> I just did not like. 
I was I was excited because it was well. It's farm a farm and, and ag- agriculture. Yeah. I was expecting that. He never talks about. He never about talk it. about he was farm. About chemtrails and fluoride in the water. Yeah. yeah. Freaking UFOs yeah. and yeah. everything was a conspiracy. He was and horrible all that to shit. the mayor. Yeah. Like, and that mayor seemed like a really nice guy. Oh, say, wait, yeah. Saying Rocky Top real nice. I re- I remember something about Lester and Lester. Here's what I would do if I were you. I would not worry about the chemtrails. I know how much you like Tennessee Tuxedo. I would just sit your ass down, get you like a. Uh, 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 he probably doesn't drink, does he? Uh, yeah. No, yeah, he probably doesn't drink so. blats or whatever. It, no. but I would I'd get you some sweet tea, get you a sweet tea get or some tea. lemonade or something, and you watch all your Tennessee tuxedos all the way through, and and you know you'll be happy. You yeah, know, you'll and be, then realize that the yeah. world is is it's still crappy, but at least it's better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know Tennessee tuxedo. You know, Mister Whoopi, you're a genius. Yeah, that's the way it is. Mister Whoopi will solve all your problems. Yeah, because it could be worse. You could be living in the 1930s. Although, you know, they did have rural banditry in those days, and that's kind of an American <laughs> tradition. That's really, you know, I miss that. So continue writing in, guys. Yeah. Yeah, keep writing in, because, you know, we love hearing from you. You know, every time, like, you write, it's like a personal kiss and a hug to every one of us. Mm-hmm. And it, it's meaningful what we have together. Yeah. So uh, send us, you know, drop us a line. Uh, thegoodspod at gmail.com. Uh, you find us on Twitter at thegoodspod, facebook.com slash thegoodspod. And uh, thank you for joining us for this episode. And Woo! This. Woo! Woo! We'll see you next week. Listen and send woo letters! <laughs> The Goods from the Woods is mixed and edited by me, Rivers Langley, and distributed by West Gas Network. Our theme song is composed by DJ Smiles. You can find him online at djsmiles.net.